need to expand a little bit on it because there's an uh, editorial or a My View segment in the iNewspaper newspaper today. I don't know if you can see that clearly. Um, with My View, Laura Bates, it's time to change the sexist status quo. Um, Laura Bates is a woman from Sheffield and she launched a campaign called Everyday Sexism. The, the purpose here is basically to raise issues which she argues and her supporters argue are faced by women every day. So it's basically a feminist organization that is lobbying for these issues to be addressed. Now on the surface you might think, well there's nothing wrong with that. I'm gonna read um I'll go read this article. It's not too long, so bear with me. Um maybe I won't read everything because you know I want to be compact for this video, but I'll read some of what she has to say and then uh, share my thoughts. Okay, this is from Laura Bates. I started the Everyday Sexism Project in April 2012 to cut through testimonies of gender inequality. Frustrated by the lack of awareness about the problem, I wanted to shine a light on the sexual harassment, discrimination and assault faced by women and girls on a daily basis. Today, only three years later, the project has reached 100,000 entries. I'm not sure whether to celebrate or mourn the milestone. What I can say with certainty is that I want to see change, and the project entries have given me a number of ideas but how to prevent the next 100,000 incidents from happening. Okay, what I'm actually going to do is give a little bit of feedback on every little segment that she talks about. Um, I can't read someone else's mind, so I don't know what her real initiative um, was for starting this project. Okay, uh, I get that she really believes there is sexism out there. Um, and I, I think there is. You know, um, those of us who really do believe in egalitarianism would recognise that there are issues that are faced by women. And I, I don't quite agree with some MRAs who say that uh, everything is perfect for women and there are never any issues that make women disproportionately uncomfortable, um, such as those connected with sexual harassment in the workplace and so on. So from that point of view, I don't have an issue with those things being discussed. I do question, though, the fact that she says, frustrated by the lack of awareness about the problem. Um, well, it seems to me that there isn't a day goes by when there isn't something about issues faced by women in the press. And she says she began in 2012. Um, this is something I've seen for years and years and years, that there has been um, women-specific issues covered in the press. So I'm not sure why suddenly in 2012 she's, you know, Anyway, I'll keep reading. Um, a huge number of entries to the project end with phrases such as it was a packed carriage and nobody said a word or even though it happened in the street in broad daylight, nobody stopped to help. Whether in public spaces or in the workplace, the resounding message is that there is often little response to sexual harassment from those around the victim. This is sometimes understandable. People might be scared of stepping in or worried about causing the situation to escalate. It isn't always possible to intervene safely. But in many cases, a bystander can challenge what's happening, and that kind of reaction is vital if we want to change the sexist status quo. Victims often freeze, panic, and shut down in the moment, so those around them are better placed to object that they might, than they might be themselves. This doesn't have to mean starting a fight, simply questioning what is happening, chatting with the victim, or offering to help all send the message that this is the that shouldn't be accepted. Well, firstly, um, I agree with her, it shouldn't be accepted. Nobody should be in a situation where they're intimidated or frightened in that way. Okay, I think most reasonable people can agree with that. But what she seems to be doing here is taking testimonies, not just from Britain, but from around the world, of bad cases. But what I would question is, is this really reflective of every situation of sexual harassment? Obviously, the women who are contacting the site have had a bad experience. But what that doesn't mention is the many, many incidents where something happens and men do intervene. Now, this is where I believe that feminist lobbies are divisive because they present a picture that does not represent the whole situation. So what she is insinuating is that whenever sexual uh, um, intimidation, harassment happens, no one cares. That's pretty much what she's insinuating. And she's basing that on the testimonies of the women who are writing in. Now, in no way am I questioning what they're saying. I said, you know, that would be, and 
my sympathies go out to them. No one should have to go through that. But again, this sort of leads to the impression that no one cares. And I strongly, I, I have personally seen people interview theme when women have been harassed. I've personally seen it. And personally, if I saw a woman getting a difficult time, I, I believe I would intervene. So what she is insinuating is that no one cares. I think it's misleading. And I don't think it's the case. Compulsory education on sex and relationships. We know that young people are growing up confused about sex and gender roles. Online porn can present a misogynistic idea of sex, with women sometimes shown being hurt, humiliated or abused. As a result, many of the young people who write into the project describe fear and concern about sex. One 13-year-old girl said she knew from seeing a video on a mobile phone that at school that during sex women cry and hurt. Um, when I visit schools, young people are confused about rape and don't realise that it's possible for a boy to rape his own girlfriend or that being touched in a sexual way without your consent is a form of sexual assault. We desperately need to give young people the tools to navigate these issues by providing compulsory age-appropriate education on sex and relationships. But she doesn't elaborate what she means about age-appropriate, but you know that's that can be um, discussed further. Um, Online porn present a misogynistic idea of sex. Well, I I have not much time for porn. I don't watch it, so I can't give an in-depth sort of view about what porn involves. So I can't say either way if that's true or not. However, I will question um, the insinuation again that she is making that all depictions of sex are about men controlling women. Um, this is a, a common feminist argument, and it it actually negates the fact that what she's ignoring in these situations is that the women are, there's a voluntary aspect there. You know, there's a big difference between rape and adult behaviour that is consensual. A very big difference. And by sort of lumping them together, feminists are playing a dangerous game and actually making the situation worse because they are then put, creating a situation whereby rather than liberating people about in terms of talking about sex and talking about important issues all it's going to do is make men frightened to basically have desires in case they're perceived to be controlling and it's going to perpetuate the idea of female victimhood now, the issues that she's talking about i'm not saying that they're not valid okay I repeat, I am not saying that they're not valid, but again, it is entirely one-sided and it's not objective at all. And it's not just based on this report. I've looked at the website and the website reflects all of this. So the issues that she's raising are important issues, but what really bugs me is it's a distortion of the whole picture. It completely ignores the fact that um, in many of these circumstances, for example, with um, adult films, it's entirely consensual. I mean, if you... I'll, I'll give an example. Um, there was a series on called Secret Diary of a Call Girl. Um, it showed women in dominatrix style outfits and it was all about sexual pleasure, etc, etc, etc. Now what I deeply resent is feminists slumping that in the same category as sexual assault. It's absolutely a, a gulf of difference. Um, in one area you have adult women making the choice to, I mean in the case of Gemma Chan and um, Billy Piper, playing the role as free-thinking adult women. And a big problem I have with a lot of the feminist logic about objectification, and their, their whole concept of sex is that it must all be built on, their entire concept is about male control versus female submission. That is a basically black and white view that feminists have. But actually, um, it's going to create a very puritanical society whereby males are frightened to show any sort of sexual desire whatsoever but in case they get accused of being a rapist. And, you know, there are men out there who abuse um, women. There's no doubt about that. But what I have a really big problem with is this distortion, and it really bugs me, and I think it's dangerous, actually. I think it stirs up resentment between men and women. Um, because it completely takes away the voluntary aspect completely um you know she doesn't mention prostitution but that's another issue that could be discussed workplace flexibility for many women being held back in the workplace because of the choice to have family is a very real fear 
Estimates suggest that up to 50,000 women each year are forced out of their jobs as a result of maternity discrimination. We need to start thinking of childcare as a parents' issue, not a women's issue. Workplaces could make a huge difference to people juggling career and caring responsibilities by introducing flexible working hours, shared pair, rental leave schemes and on-site childcare. Well, Labour and the Liberal Democrats have proposed those sort of schemes. Again, um, there is legitimate concern there. I understand that. Um, if a woman is on maternity, she shouldn't have to feel job insecurity for that reason. So again, that's a legitimate point. But once again, it's just one-sided because the the problem with this organisation, um, everyday sexism, it's one hundred percent, one hundred percent about sexism faced by women. Now, what she says there, um, whilst accurate, it doesn't take into account, for example, the massive, massive level of discrimination faced by men in so-called family courts. If she really believes in equality, why does she know? Can, show no concern about the absolute lack of balance there. Um, clear policies for universities. The number of offender students, victim support groups and politicians recently pointed out many students who experience rape or sexual assault at universities, uh, sorry, university receive very little support. My project entries from students who have been harassed or assaulted who feel that they have little confidence that they will be taken seriously. Or believe that they, if they come forward, many experience victim blaming within their peer group, being asked what they were wearing or whether they were asking for it. A survey for the Daily Telegraph in 2015 revealed that one in three female students in Britain has experienced some form of sexual assault or abuse at university. It's not enough for universities to respond to such incidents in an inconsistent and ad hoc manner. Clear guidelines should be developed and implemented to hold universities to a higher standard and to let students know. The, what support they can expect from the higher education institution. Okay, um, in a situation of rape or um, harassment, uh, the victim should feel secure enough to speak about that problem. And absolutely, they should never be blamed for what they're wearing. Or, um, you know, that's an area I'd probably be sympathetic with what she's saying. Um, no way should victims be blamed on the grounds of what they are wearing. Um, but what I hope Laura Bates would agree with is that because rape is such a serious crime, there needs to be an absolute thorough investigation. Um, a girl who, or a young woman who has had that terrible experience should have the confidence to come forward and not be, feel that she is not going to be believed. There should be an assumption that she is a victim. However, there should also be an assumption of guilt, uh, an assumption of innocence, sorry, against the accused, that is fairness. And we have had situations where innocent men have been accused falsely. I'm not saying that it is in every case, but Laura Bates and people like her need to recognize that that is also a legitimate concern. So there needs to be a balance in this. Basically, both parties need to be assumed innocent. Um, the girl, young woman who comes forward needs to be treated with compassion. She needs to be given support and she needs to feel that um, she will receive justice in a fair way. But the young man who has been accused of that also needs to um, be in a situation where he's not going to be simply labelled a rapist, because at the moment we have a situation where rape defendants are named and the victim is not. That is blatantly unfair. Again, Laura Bates has had nothing to say about that. So a lot of this perceived inequality is actually um, doesn't show the whole picture. Um, so what I'm saying here is absolutely this is a serious issue. It needs to be addressed. And, you know, if a close female friend of mine was raped or assaulted, and actually I have had that experience. I was going to testify in a court of law. In fact, it didn't go ahead because the guy confessed. But, um, I, sorry, I shouldn't say I was going to testify. I meant I was going to go there to support her uh, emotionally speaking. So, you know, I'm not unsympathetic to this at all. I regard rape as a heinous crime. It's cowardly. It is about control. And rapists are scumbags and they should be um, behind bars. But there are too many situations where a defendant, I mean, the Chad Evans case, for example, feminists automatically jumped on this, automatically assumed he was guilty without looking at all the facts. Um, I've looked at that case and there seemed to be real loopholes in the evidence that was weighed against him. Um, 
I have a problem with the fact that whilst it's true that there are men out there who have a knee-jerk reaction, say, oh, she must be lying, or um, it's because of what she was wearing or something like that, that's that's absolutely odious. But there are also knee-jerk feminists who automatically assume that if a man is accused of rape, he must be guilty. Both positions are dangerous. In a fair society, in a fair society, everyone has a right to a fair trial, and all victims should expect justice. That's fairness. And if Laura Bates really believes in egalitarianism, she would uh, she would agree with me that a rape defendant has a right to anonymity. Um, and finally, for the appointment of new women regarding catwalk headlines, alongside descriptions of the clothes and makeup, where pieces of women's bodies are magnified in circles of shame on the front of magazines, where business women's stellar job appointments are heralded over the title "Mother of Free and Sexual Violence," and sexual violence is still sometimes reported in a titillating or victim-blaming manner in the national press. It would be encouraging to see the media take a lead in challenging gender inequality rather than perpetuating it. No single action or policy shift will solve the problem outright, but we can tackle it only if businesses, politicians, schools, universities and individuals act together to create change both from the top down and the bottom up. Um, again, there's some things there I would agree with. There is a very smutty and um, unprofessional manner in which a lot of the national press deal with serious subjects. So I would agree with her on that. And I have no time for the gutter press. And I do think the way they report sensitive issues sometimes are disgraceful. Um, in terms of women's representation in Parliament, I've spoken about this before. It's true that there is a majority of MPs on men. But I would put the point that there is actually no, dis you know, sexism is a loaded word. It implies discrimination. Now, the fact of the matter is that whilst there is a majority of male MPs, there is actually no laws discriminating against women. There is nothing whatsoever saying that women cannot stand for election and get elected. In my city, all three MPs are women and a large number of councillors. And actually, what this rhetoric does from feminists is constantly treat women like victims, and it is very misguided. Um, Phil also talks about how women are portrayed in the media. Well, I'm sorry, but... When feminists talk about um, male middle-aged politicians in a very sweeping sort of dismissive way, that is equally sexist. Why is it that there is this assumption that just because a politician is 50 and he's white and male, he must be a bad politician? That is sexist. And actually, it completely ignores the fact that men, just like women, have different views. You get left-wing men, you get right-wing men, you get centrist men. So. To me, that is utterly hypocritical to bemoan the fact that women are women politicians are talked about in a certain way. And I'm not saying I support that, but what I resent is, again, the double standards. So she can complain about that and ignore the fact that um, men are actually spoken about in a way that, uh, and there's other areas here. If a woman politician has faced tough questions and she breaks under the pressure, as was recently the case with Natalie Bennett, Feminists say, oh, it's because the sexist reporter was asking her tough questions. But they ignore the fact that male politicians, like Ed Miliband and Nigel Farage, are constantly asked uh, very sniping, gotcha sort of questions. Politics is a tough business, and every politician has a rough ride. So I just don't buy into this idea of female victimhood. And I, I really think that responsible women politicians um, need to also accept that they are they have the same responsibility as their male counterparts to playing the victimhood card to appeal to feminist lobbies i don't have much time for it really because those women are in a position of privilege quite frankly um yeah so um that's i'm just basing it on the things that she said there there's a lot more that i can say about feminism i'll conclude with this i am not disagreeing with everything she's saying I am not saying that the issues she raises are not valid issues. I'm not saying that for a second. But what I resent about her project, and to me it exemplifies feminist lobby groups, is the fact they're so one-sided and the fact that they distort the picture to present the situation as all men are in a position of privilege, all women are downtrodden. 
the way that we will get equality is that when we start to really think about equal responsibility and equal um just treating people uh, as equal but what feminists do is treat women as victims i mean if i was a woman i would think wait a second i'm i'm not weak i'm not downtrodden by men i'm a free thinking independent woman i'm responsible for my decisions the feminists don't believe that women are responsible for their decisions they believe it's all the fault of men and individual feminists may not hate men i had a debate with um a young woman who called herself a feminist yesterday we had quite a long debate it was relatively civil we found some common areas but um the problem was and this is what i find this is why it's so difficult to really engage in adult debate with feminists every single point they make and every single position they start from is based on a victimhood mentality now how can you engage in a civil adult debate with someone who every word that you will say they will perceive as a personal attack or they will perceive it as uh being about being oppressed feminists need to accept the fact that not everyone agrees with them and no that's not because of sexism it's because people have different views on how things should be done yes sexism exists yes these issues need to be discussed but i just have no time for an organization that claims to be about equality but is so blatantly one-sided if Laura Bates had marketed a campaign that also addressed men's issues, then I would say, well done, thank you, thank you. You're a genuine and egalitarian. And I would have no problem whatsoever with her raising issues that impact women. And the same applies, by the way, for hardcore MRA groups, because in a way they're just as bad, but in reverse. I understand why they've been more vocal in recent years, because it is a defensive reaction to feminism. But what I would say to MRA groups is just be careful that you don't end up like feminists, blaming all the problems that you or men have on women. The issues that I've mentioned men face are not necessarily the fault of feminists. Um, there's a lot of complex issues behind them. Um, and it's not fair to blame feminists for that. Although feminists do sometimes silence uh, debate on these issues. That's a problem. Um, so, yeah. I'll leave it there. Uh, I've tried to cover a lot of things in this. Um, I really hope some some women would be watching these videos because I really think it's important to get a balanced perspective and not always listen to feminist propaganda. Because quite frankly, what they do is they pick and choose issues to be outraged about and they only show half the picture. And sometimes it does, frankly, anger me because I think it is negative. I think it divides men and women rather than uniting people all it does is continuously try to tell women that they are constant victims and that men are constant oppressors of course they won't come out and say all men are bastards or all men are rapists you know um they're more clever than that but it's very subtly that's what it is doing it is dividing men and women and i do deeply resent it true egalitarians recognize that there are issues faced by both genders feminists only care about women's issues it's a fact 